everyone. I'm Sarah. We're going to be doing Science with Sarah today at Basis San Antonio in the Medical Center with these awesome second graders. We're going to be making catapults and we say good morning, San Antonio! We'll have that coming up. Live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Sarah Spivey is the elementary teacher we never had. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is Wednesday. It is February 15th. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. I love the energy of Sarah, of course, and the second graders as well. She'll be joined by David Sears a little bit later on in the newscast. This morning, I coined the phrase or conjured up Forrest Gump talking about our South Texas weather. Oh, yes, the box of chocolates. You yes. never know what you're going to get around here, and Justin will probably agree. It's a good analogy. It's a good analogy. In the next several days will certainly uh, keep us on our toes. It'll keep us guessing on what we want to wear with the way temperatures are going to fluctuate. But we know this morning that fog is the big issue. Visibility is down in a lot of spots, but especially here in San Antonio, visibility is down below a tenth of a mile. You see 0 0.06 there. A fog rolled in. I don't think it's going to last that long, but at the moment, we're kind of in the thick of it, for lack of a better word. And as we look at the weather headlines today, a few more hours of fog, as I said. Then the fog clears, the clouds clear, and we get some big-time heat. Temperatures soar this afternoon. Then a cold front arrives tonight, and that changes everything for tomorrow. We get gusty winds and much cooler temperatures. At the moment, we're sitting at 60, and I will tell you, visibility just on this picture right here does seem to have improved just a little bit. So I think we're headed in the right direction. Your case at 12 hour forecast fog this morning, clouds through about lunchtime. Then we see some sun this afternoon and look at those temperatures up around 82 for a high. Feeling a little bit like summer today, 79 at 6 o'clock. 73 at 8 p.m. It's just updating for us there. And then, as I said, we get a front right about midnight. With the front, a thin line of showers. But I think the bigger story is going to be the gusty winds. We're going to see gusts up to 40 miles per hour by tomorrow morning. Out of the north, it will feel much chillier on your Thursday morning. Uh, we'll talk more about these changes. Any more rain chances coming up, too? That's here in just a few minutes. Well, let's get over to Stephen now. Is the fog causing any issues on the roadways? Well, it's tough to say right now, Justin. We're seeing our share of, uh, share of stalled vehicles out there. 10, uh, 410, pardon me, at New Braunfels. We have a stalled vehicle off of the shoulder lane. It's not causing any major issues for drivers, but you can check out some of these transguide cameras. Yeah, that fog has definitely taken over the lens in some of these shots. 35 at Topper Wine. Although it's uh, foggy out there, we're not seeing major issues. The morning commute has dwindled down, so that could really help in avoiding a lot of the incidents. But I do want to get your attention to a crash that was causing a bit of a slowdown along I-35 northbound as you approach 37. Uh, that's already cleared out, so we don't have to worry about that. And some of the slowdowns that we had on our map that were really just taking over the streets have already again dwindled down. Morning rush is pretty much done and over with, but we have to keep a close eye on these roads regardless because we still have some of that fog out there. Hopefully it doesn't impact the commute. You could see at 1604 Pat Booker closer to the northeast side. Things are still quiet, but I'll watch the roads closely throughout the 9 a.m. newscast and I'll be sure to update you if anything pops up. Guys, Stephen, thank you. Happening in about 30 minutes or so, Andre McDonald, the Air Force major found guilty of manslaughter and the death of his wife, will be back in court. Now, we are told it's to discuss the tampering with evidence charge from that case. A source tells Case at 12 that McDonald has accepted a plea deal on that charge. The hearing is expected to start at around 930 this morning. Court reporter Eric Hernandez is there to cover the proceedings. We'll be live streaming it once they start. So stay with us on air and online for the very latest. Huge flames seen shooting up from an apartment home downtown overnight. San Antonio fire crews are working to determine the cause of a massive two alarm fire. Now, that fire happened just north of downtown near I-35. KSAT's Alyssa Cole has more from the scene. I'm here on Baltimore Avenue near the I-35 frontage road where roughly 30 fire crews worked together this morning to put out an extensive fire at this apartment home around 1 o'clock this morning. Public information officer with SAFD tells us when crews arrived to the 4300 square foot building, it was boarded up and appeared as if some people were still presently living there. Family related to the owner of this property tell us off camera there was a man living on the second floor, but he was not present when the fire broke out. Now officials say holes in the bottom of the floor on the first floor made fighting the fire from inside extremely dangerous. It forced them to take a defensive approach from outside of the building where they were able to put out majority of the flames. 
Now, a few vehicles nearby did catch on fire, but the good news is no one was injured. Investigators are working to find out what caused this fire, but they do believe there's a possibility it started on the first floor. Reporting downtown, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. And we are learning that crews are planning to demolish the structure. We're going to keep you updated on when that will happen. For now, here's today's 9 at 9. New details about the gunman in the Michigan State University shooting. University police say the suspect, 43-year-old Anthony McRae, shot himself during a confrontation and died. Authorities also found a note in McRae's pocket that made reference to plans to attack two more schools in New Jersey. McRae had no connection to the victims or the university. The gunman responsible for another mass shooting faces sentencing today. Peyton Gendron, a self-professed white supremacist, is expected to get life in prison after pleading guilty to killing 10 people last year at the Topps supermarket in Buffalo, New York. Gendron is the first person in New York to be charged with domestic terrorism motivated by hate. U.S. officials say the Chinese spy balloon was intended for surveillance and may have been inadvertently blown over the U.S. mainland by unusual weather conditions. However, some senior U.S. officials are casting doubt on that report. Meanwhile, NORAD is working to recalibrate their systems to register threats like the spy balloon while weeding out weather balloons and other similar objects. The head of the FAA has ordered a sweeping review of the agency. The acting administrator said they are experiencing the safest period in aviation history, but they can't take that for granted. And that recent events are a reminder the agency must not become complacent. This comes after a technological breakdown last month led to a nationwide airplane departure grounding and after two near collisions on runways at two major U.S. airports. There are growing concerns about contamination in Ohio after a train derailment earlier this month. It was discovered that there were even more chemicals on that train than were originally reported. Now some residents have reported illnesses and officials say thousands of local fish have died. Many are wondering if the water is safe to drink. The Treasury Department paid a record $213 billion in interest payments on the national debt the fourth quarter of last year. That is up $63 billion from the same period a year earlier. The hike is mainly due to raises the Federal Reserve has made to its interest rate. That rate has gone up 4.5 percentage points in the past 12 months. Dozens of cleanup crews are continuing to clear out debris in Austin after the major ice storm that hit a couple of weeks ago, but normalcy may be months away. Austin Resource Recovery is expecting to make two more rounds of debris collections over the next two months. Senator Ted Cruz says he will run for re-election. He told reporters he will seek a third term in the Senate in 2024, but it's still not clear whether Cruz is planning a presidential bid. That's because Texas law does allow a candidate to run for Senate and president at the same time. Elon Musk is getting ready to step down as the CEO of Twitter. He said he's looking for the right person to, quote, stabilize the organization and thinks he'll probably pick a successor before the end of the year. However, Musk's resignation may not lead to a total break with Twitter. He said after he resigns as CEO, he'll be in charge of the company's software and service teams. And that's today's Nine at Nine. In your morning headlines, the topic of kids' safety and privacy online was the center of attention at a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing yesterday. As CNN's Emily Schmidt reports, both parties agree that action needs to be taken on this issue. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the, the Senate Judiciary Committee spent about two and a half hours Tuesday in a rare unified hearing. This cause is truly bipartisan. All of them are bipartisan. It's an issue that keeps parents and children up at night. A psychologist testified the average teen spends more than eight hours a day online. That's more than three times the hearing length. The last time Congress passed a law to protect children online was 25 years ago. On Monday, a CDC survey found increasing mental health challenges among teens. 42% of high school students reported experiencing persistent sadness and hopelessness in 2021. Researchers say social media contributes. Kristen Bride testified that her son Carson didn't get a phone until eighth grade, no social media until ninth. Yet she says precautions did not stop his suicide. Carson had received nearly 100 negative, harassing, sexually explicit and humiliating messages, including 40 in just one day. 
She said she could not successfully sue the social media sites because of something called Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. It provides legal immunity to websites that moderate user-generated content. Lawmakers are considering limits. Other ideas include creating a digital regulatory commission or setting age limits. Senators promised change and hinted that big tech will be invited to future hearings. I'm Emily Schmidt reporting. And if you or someone you know needs help, you can call the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline at 988. Since it launched last summer, it has already received more than 2 million calls, texts, and chat messages to call centers. Some other top stories this morning in your headlines. Hyundai and Kia are finally fixing a problem that made some of their vehicles very easy to steal. So much so that some insurance companies refuse to write new policies for those vehicle owners. So they come up with a software patch, which is free for owners of affected vehicles. Those include Hyundai's and Kia's made between 2015 and 2019 that have turnkey ignitions, not those push button starts. The vehicles with turnkey ignitions are roughly twice as likely to be stolen as vehicles of similar age. That's because many lack some of the basic auto theft prevention technology included in most other vehicles. Time now, 909 and 61 degrees for now. Coming up on GMS at 9, a local company that created unique medical kits that can be placed inside a cargo aircraft is now developing another container that could be used for military or civilian operations. When we come back, Tiffany Huertas will tell us about this latest project and the impact it's having. A local company first created medical units that can be placed inside a cargo aircraft, and now they're developing a container that can transport items by rocket. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from Knight Aerospace, located at Port San Antonio, with how this project can save lives. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning. Really cool stuff happening here at Night Aerospace. Just check it out. This medical unit right here, they're finishing it up and it will be delivered to the Royal Canadian Air Force. It's the second unit they created and now they're working on another cargo container. To talk more about this, we have Michael Knight. Good morning. Talk to us about these units and the impact it's having. Good morning. Uh, so this is the um, aerobanical biocontainment module that we're delivering to the Royal Canadian Air Force, transforming the way that medical individuals, patients can be transported in the back of cargo aircraft. How long does it take to make one of these? So our first unit, uh, once we got under contract, we delivered in seven months. The second unit, same exact time frame, seven months from contract award to, to handoff to the Canadians. Um, within that time frame. What does it mean to have this company do this here in San Antonio? It's amazing. Um, I grew up here in San Antonio. Um, it's great to see. Uh, it's my family uh, company. It's a family business. My grandfather started the company. Um, but it's great to build it up here in San Antonio. We are a small business, but we're continuing to growing. We started out with 30 employees. We're up to 60 and we're continuing growing from there. Tell us about this latest project. So the latest project is a small business innovation research contract that we are awarded from the U.S. government. Um, it's to help innovate um, and provide containers and cargo systems that go on rockets, which is the next innovation that Knight Aerospace is looking into and expanding on outside of cargo aircraft is into the rocket. And this meant a lot for your grandfather. So what does this now mean for you to be leading this? It, it means it's amazing. Um, I saw where we started out as a real small company to where we're at now, um, taking it to the next generation, continuing and taking it to the next generation, innovating all of our projects, um, innovating and helping the world, moving, helping humanitarian aid, um, using the rocket cargo, uh, moving patients, not only infectious disease patients, but any medical type of system um, can be utilized using our safe and durable products. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us this it's morning. My pleasure. Thank you. We're going to talk more with you and we're going to bring you the inside of what it looks inside one of these containers at the noon show. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Tiffany. Let's go outside with live cam. Much earlier this morning before the sun came up, we thought we saw fog. Yes. Then we saw what we thought was smog, but it was smoke from a big house fire. Mm. And then we realize, yeah, fog is truly an issue, a big <laughs> yeah. issue this morning. Yeah, it is. At least at the moment, I don't think it's going to last very long because the sun pops out this afternoon and then we're talking about heat. But as we said at the top of the show, we get a little bit of everything next couple yeah. days. So be prepared. We'll first start with the fog because uh, it is 
pretty thick in spots here on San Antonio. Now I'll tell you, these numbers are coming up and just looking at live cam, it does look like visibility is improving, but places like Bernie stage, visibility is close to zero. New Braunfels, you're still at a quarter of a mile, but we've seen some improvement here on San Antonio International. Randolph is at uh, about 0.4 and give it a couple of hours, the fog should lift. And it really is kind of focused right along I-35 here, San Antonio up to Austin, and then we've got better numbers, but still some fog down closer to the coast. There's the scene outside once again. Temperatures right now, 62 at the airport. East Julie winds at seven miles per hour. Boy, that moisture came back quickly this morning after we saw a pretty dry afternoon yesterday. And looking at the satellite picture, so we can see the fog here uh, and uh, it's kind of expanding a little bit as you get up towards Bandera, out towards Hondo. Some of this is a little cloudiness too. The question will be, when does this go away? And again, I think the fog lifts, but uh, we may see some clouds hold on a little bit longer. And then once the sun pops out, that's when the temperatures really start to heat up. So here's what our computer model is thinking. And it shows by, certainly by lunchtime, that things start to uh, clear out some. And look at the numbers this afternoon. This is the forecast high, 82 here in San Antonio, 91 Pearsall, 93 at Carrizo Springs in February. That's where we are. But this is just a one day thing because our front comes through tonight. We think it arrives sometime around 1 a.m. Along the front, a broken line of showers. Not important rain. This is not going to add up to much, but there could be a shower or two as the front comes through. Then once it passes by, clouds kind of stick around, but the big story will be the gusty winds coming up tomorrow behind that front. It will also be much cooler. 57, the forecast high tomorrow, uh, opposed to 82 today. And you see the mid 50s in the hill country, maybe some 60s down south. So the kind of uh, bottom line forecast here, 82 today, warm and breezy. Tomorrow, 59. That's it. And we'll have windy conditions, gusts to 40 miles per hour. Let's take a look at the uh, the forecast winds. And by 5 o'clock today, breezy but not windy. Once the front comes through, though, everything changes. These are the wind gusts around 1 a.m. Gusting the 40, Rio Medina, gusting the 34, Bernie Sage, gusting the 30 here in San Antonio. And the winds actually pick up some by sunrise tomorrow. So work and school tomorrow is going to be very windy. Winds out of the north gusting close to 35, maybe even 40 miles per hour here around San Antonio. That'll make it feel a little bit chillier too. And the winds will slowly calm as we get into the afternoon, but still breezy, if not windy. And 5 o'clock, it's going to take probably until tomorrow night for those winds to completely die down. Of course, uh, the issue we will have tomorrow with the gusty winds and the very dry conditions out west, high fire danger. In fact, we have extreme fire danger around Del Rio. We've got to be really careful here because any sort of grass fire, if it were to develop, would spread very quickly in these kind of conditions. So uh, tomorrow just adds up there. 59, as we said tomorrow, 56 Friday. Notice the low Friday morning, 32. 34 Saturday morning, so a chilly start, but not a bad afternoon. 60 with mostly cloudy skies. 73 Sunday, 80 on President's Day, so we're right back up into the 80s again. And we'll get another shower, or a chance of a shower or two, coming up on Tuesday. So a lot there, a lot to look at in the seven-day forecast. Uh, but there will be a lot of changes just over the next 24 hours, guys. And if we don't like it one day, it'll probably change the next. Yeah, that's always the running joke here in Texas, right, <laughs> with the weather. But uh, it definitely applies this week. An oldie but a goodie. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. 919, 61 degrees. Let's look over to where Sarah is live. She's out at Base of San Antonio Primary School in the Medical Center, and they're getting ready for their experiment right now. It's Wednesday. That means it's time for another Science with Sarah. And this morning, Sarah Spivey and David Sears are out in the Medical Center area here in San Antonio at Basis San Antonio Primary School. So they're going to be making popsicle stick catapults with the second graders there. Good morning, guys. Hey, good morning. Yes, David is fanning himself with the popsicle sticks. We are making catapults out of popsicle sticks, bottle caps, and rubber bands. It's pretty awesome. So, David, are you ready to do I'm ready. this? Let's do this. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to take eight popsicle sticks. You're going to stack them up onto each other, and you're going to tie them together with rubber bands on both sides. Way to go, David. Almost there. Okay, while David's doing that, I want to show you these two popsicle sticks that I have here. They've got notches on them. And these, this is going to act as our lever 
I'm gonna go ahead and make some notches on these what ones for you. In your rubber band break. Oh, you get another one. Yeah. And so then you're gonna make two notches. These are gonna act as your lever here. So David, what I want you to do is I want you to stick one of these levers through one of the of the popsicle sticks. This is gonna be our base. Man. I know, a little difficult. You got it? Here, let me help hold you. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can do it. You I can, can do, do it. it. I can do it. There we go, boom. Okay, with the other lever on top, you're going to to come to bind these right along those notches. There. Okay, and if you want a little extra fortification, you'll tie it right around right around that fulcrum. That's what we call the middle point there. Due to time constraints, I've already got one. Okay, boom. <laughs> All right, so then what you do here is you take one of your glue dots. Oh yeah, okay, well, I would do that. We Where's gotta some, do that. I don't, yeah, okay, here, here, one of your glue dots. Did and you, you drink put it all right the here. Topo Chico? Did you drink all I here? did. The... Guilty as charged. And then you'll put your bottle cap, and that acts as a basket, Damn. and then you can fling it See, around. See what you can do, marshmallow bottle cap. Watch Let's this. Let's try this. This is how it works. You ready? Here we go. Oh, oh. oh look hey, what I got. Got plenty of marshmallows. That's right at it. Ready? Yeah. And what the great thing is, is you can pick other things to do this with. So we've got some pom-poms here. We've got pencil erasers. Hey, these awesome second graders, they made a hypothesis as to what is going to fly faster or farther. We're going to be showing that off here in a bit. Meanwhile, David's eating some more marshmallows. So stick around for that. We're going to have this fun awesome science experiment about One simple more. machines coming up. Stick around for that. <laughs>
Which flew, which one flew the furthest? The bead. The bead went flying. Did it? How far did your bead go? All the way over there. Way over there to the corner of the room. That's pretty good. What was the one that didn't go very far? I think it was the, the racer. The racer didn't go very far. So what does that mean? The racer is heavier than the bead, right? Yeah. Is that what that means? Yeah. Okay, so we learned some science today, didn't we? Yeah. That's why we're here to learn about science. Which one of yours went further? Um, the Marshmallow. The marshmallow went the furthest? Did you catch it? Yes. Did you eat it? Yeah. Ah, they're pretty good, huh? We like the marshmallows. All right. Excellent work today, guys. It tastes good. It tastes good? You like that marshmallow? We like marshmallows. Guys, what did we think? Was that a fun experiment? Yeah! Awesome. So for more Science with Sarah experiments, you can go to ksat.com. Everybody say hi to everyone at home. Whoa! Hi guys. Hi, Hello. Job. Great job. Thank you, everybody. I think the favorite was the marshmallow. What do High you think? fives on oh. stuff still flying yeah. across. <laughs> the fun continues out there. Sarah, David, thank you guys. Awesome job. 62 degrees outside. Uh, it probably will not look like that later today, right, Justin? No, this, this fog will lift. And I love the energy out there, by the way. My kiddos came home yesterday. Same kind of energy after all the Valentine's uh, Day candy. Mm. How'd that go? It, it was okay. It's fun. It was it's okay. Fun. Uh, yeah, still a lot of candy sitting, uh, sitting around. I may have to eat it myself. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, at a picture here real quick on KSA Connect. This is from Yvonne, who always sends in some great shots. And, uh, yeah, the, the smell of grape is in the air. You know, the, 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 the uh, mountain laurel there producing some of that beautiful smelling uh, blooms. And uh, we see that every year. It's about that time. So we appreciate it, as always. Uh, sending in that picture, Yvonne. Let's take a look at the visibility. So improvement here. We're up to about a mile in San Antonio. Bernie stage still uh, an issue there. New Braunfels, Seguin, Hondo still seeing some thicker fog. But as I said, this lifts here fairly soon and then we'll see some improvement over the next couple of hours. Pollen count is in. Molds and ash are both low. So these numbers coming down some. Good to see that. And your case at 12 hour forecast fog and cloud cover this morning, but sun pops out this afternoon and that gets those temperatures up to 82 for a high. Southerly winds will be anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour, but that's nothing compared to what those winds will look like tomorrow. Temperatures take a nosedive. We got a front headed our way. We'll time it out for you. Let you know what it means for your Thursday forecast. Coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. All right, thank you very much, Justin. Heads up, folks. Uh, this is a normal traffic trouble spot due to construction, but right now, I want to let you know that 281 near Stone Oak Parkway, the main lanes northbound are closed right now, we believe, due to construction. So the frontage road and that exit ramp are jam-packed right now. Everybody trying to get northbound on 281 North, heading up towards Bulverde, Spring Branch, and Johnson City. So again, expect delay if you're headed outside 1604 northbound on 281 due to construction. Well, new economic data for the month of January reveals the cost of most consumer goods rose last month, but despite the increase, annual inflation continues to decline. CNN's Mike Valerio details how sky-high prices continue to break household budgets. Consumer prices in January continued to decline on a year-over-year -year basis, but inflation edged higher for the month, up half a percent from December, according to data released Tuesday by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. The critical thing is down, but not down nearly as much as we expected, and not down nearly as much as you would hope if you were as the Fed is currently trying to get inflation back towards some kind of normal. The increase largely due to rising shelter costs, which accounted for nearly half the surge. Other key household budget items like food, gasoline, and natural gas also got more expensive in January, along with pricier motor vehicle insurance, recreation, apparel, and home furnishings. There were a few bright spots, though. Prices for used cars, medical care, and airline fares all falling from December. The new report comes on the heels of an unexpectedly strong January jobs report that saw a gain of more than half a million jobs. High inflation and a strong jobs market painting a confusing picture for economists. We were heading in a high inflationary environment and the probability for recession was significantly higher. Now that's completely been turned upside down. 
Efforts by the Fed to ease inflation have yet to materialize in the economy, experts say, and more interest rate hikes are likely on the way. We're just not seeing the cracking in the economy that people had anticipated at this stage, and I think it remains to be seen when that will show up. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. It is American Heart Month, and tomorrow we will be hosting a KSAT Community Town Hall with local experts and healthcare professionals talking about heart health. The town hall will be at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon on KSAT.com, and our very own Alyssa Cole will be our moderator. If you have questions you'd like to get answered, you can submit them anytime on KSAT.com in the KSAT Community section. And the winner of the record $2 billion Powerball jackpot is no longer a mystery, but only the winner's name was revealed, no other information. Edwin Gastro bought the winning ticket at a store in an area north of Pasadena. Now, he understands his name is part of the public record and a part of history, but he wants to remain as private as he can be. He did release a statement to be read by lottery officials, though. As much as I am shocked and ecstatic to have won the Powerball drawing, the real winner is the California public school system. Three of the top 10 jackpots in history were won in California. Now, officials say those drawings alone raised more than $150 million for California schools. As for Edwin, he opted for the lump sum prize, which is worth nearly $1 billion. 938, 63 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. We'll be right back. Welcome back, 942. I got your six is a phrase in the military that means I got your back, which is the message the I got your six summit hopes to send to service members and veterans who are struggling. Jonathan Goto explains what the event is all about through the story of a retired major and mother who's been there. Transitioning from active duty service to civilian life, not as easy as it may seem. And retired Air Force Major Adrian Beard knows the challenges firsthand. I felt like I prepared myself before I got out of the Air Force. And then when I got out of the Air Force, it was a totally different story. I thought it was going to be a smooth ride down a snowy hill. But instead, it ended up being a very rough, bumpy ATV ride. Beard didn't plan to go so long without a job and without pay while she waited for benefits to kick in. I hung Humbly tapped into the San Antonio Food Bank because I had little twins that needed to be fed. Beard now works as a liaison between active duty and veterans. She's attending the I Got Your Sick Summit to find out what help is available from hundreds of nonprofits, resources that oftentimes veterans don't know exist. Bridging that gap is the purpose of this event. Folks here at Got Your Sick Summit say the problem isn't a lack of resources, but how do we get the numerous resources into their hands? There's a, an embarrassment of riches, some might say, in San Antonio because there is so much support. But it is still not always as easy as it could be to connect with that support. Former Chief Petty Officer in the United States Navy, so Julianne Stith, says one of the many resources, the United Way, has measured that at least 30,000 veterans in Bear County don't make a living wage. And so those are the ones that we're seeing a lot who kind of get caught needing help with rent and food, uh, child care, things like that. So, yes, it is a problem here. Jonathan Cotto, KSET 12 News. It's nice, 63 degrees, not mm -hmm. as cold as earlier today. No, a lot of that has to do with moisture. We had a good surge of moisture coming overnight, and that led to some fog. Uh, and then we're going to get some uh, really warm temperatures, well above average this afternoon. Uh, let's take a look at the visibility. These numbers have improved since the last time we talked to you, so we're improving by the minute. Up to two mile visibility at the airport, uh, close to two miles in Bernie Stage. Remember, about 15 minutes ago, this was close to zero. So, looking better and better with the fog. Now, we still may get some low clouds hanging around for a while longer. That tells me the sun's probably going to pop out here uh, a little bit later, probably after lunch, and then we'll get those uh, really warm temperatures we were talking about. There's the scene, still some low hanging clouds. Ceilings are still low here at the airport 62, 63 Stinson, 64 Kelly, 63 at Randolph. 
and winds are light. It was a good setup for fog this morning is that shallow layer of moisture surged in. We can see it nicely here on the visible satellite picture. So it's overspread most of Bear County. It's uh, making its way up into Bandera, Hondo, Sabadol, up towards Sisterdale. Now west of that, sun is out. And so if you're watching us from Rock Springs, Lake Uvalde or Del Rio, it is already sunny and you know you're going to get some very warm temperatures later today with that full sun. Uh, seeing some of it around Pleasanton too, and then some lingering clouds down to the southeast of that. So here's what we're looking at forecast wise when we're talking about temperatures. This is four o'clock clouds shift out 82 this afternoon. Some places could be in the mid 80s like Hondo and Divine, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a couple 90s on the map. Places like Carrizo Springs, it is that warm. But as we get into uh, tomorrow morning, the front comes through. We think around midnight, maybe just after midnight, with it a thin line of showers. But we're not going to worry about the rain too much because there just won't be much with it. Uh, the bigger story will be the gusty winds and the cooler temperatures. So by tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., 48 here in San Antonio. But that comes with a good, stout, northerly wind. In fact, gusts could be up to around 40 miles per hour. Uh, so it's going to feel chillier than that. And it's uh, just one of those things where we have to remind you once again, if it's uh, your trash day, make sure you secure your trash can because it will roll right down the street with these kind of winds. Tomorrow afternoon, we're only up around 59. Clouds probably stick around some off and on cloudiness, but that'll keep temperatures in the upper 50s, uh, close to 60. Uh, it'll be uh, quite a bit chillier. So let's look at the time of this front. As I said, just after midnight, probably here in San Antonio, that happens a little bit earlier. You're up around Kerrville and Rock Springs, 9 to 10 o'clock, and then down towards the coast more 4 to 6 a.m. Uh, thin line of showers, as I said, gusts to 40 miles per hour by tomorrow morning and much cooler. Big change from today's high temperature in the 80s. So let's look at the forecast winds. Uh, this is 5 o'clock today, showing some gusts maybe around 20, 25 miles per hour. Winds calm for a little bit, but then once the front comes through around 1 a.m., they pick right back up. 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts at this point, and I think the strongest winds come right around 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, as we're heading to work and school, it's going to be very, very windy. Gusts 44 miles per hour in Holotus, 39 Rio Medina. These are just estimations, but I think in the range 35 to 40 is a pretty good bet uh, out of the north. And then even through midday, we're still seeing the very strong winds. It's going to take until probably dinner time before these winds finally start to calm some and we see some better conditions. On top of all of that, we're going to get some pretty dry air shifting in tomorrow, especially out west. So this is the relative humidity in Del Rio tomorrow afternoon. And when you have these percentages uh, down here in the teens, you have a pretty significant fire danger. You compound that with the wind. Not a good situation. I would say the fire danger, well, it is. It's in the extreme risk tomorrow, about as high as it gets if you're out near Del Rio. And we've got the very high category for most areas west of San Antonio. Risk isn't as high here, but I'd say the entire area, we've got to watch for this with these gusty winds. Any sort of grass fire that gets started will spread very, very quickly. Uh, so obviously no outdoor burning goes without saying, but uh, just be careful. 59 tomorrow, 32 Friday morning, we're down to freezing. And then uh, 56 Friday, 60 Saturday, 73 Sunday. We moderate back into the 80s next week but uh, some big ups and downs next couple days. A lot to look out for, especially with our wardrobe changes. It's all over the place. Yeah, it's one of those weeks. Uh, it does level out a little bit as we head into next week. Not too bad. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Justin. Right now, it's 948 on your Wednesday morning happening right now. Andre McDonald is back in a Bear County courtroom. He's that Air Force major found guilty of manslaughter and the death of his wife, Andreen, back in 2019. That is uh, not him, obviously. We're told today they are discussing the tampering with evidence charge. From that case, you're looking live right now at the judge in that courtroom. A source tells us that McDonald has accepted a plea deal on that charge. We are live streaming this hearing, so you can continue to watch it online at kset.com. Our court reporter, reporter Eric Hernandez, is also in the courtroom right now to cover the proceedings. So stay with us on air and online for the latest. We'd like to get you caught up on a developing story out of New York State where you're looking live in the courtroom during victim impact statements. And this is what we want to let you know that white supremacists you just saw there the orange uh, prison scrubs who killed 10 black people in a Buffalo supermarket uh, was briefly taken out of the courtroom a short time ago during this sentencing hearing after someone in the audience rushed at him. And those victim impact statements do continue now with heavy security there around 
the uh, white supremacist who's been uh, is now awaiting sentencing in this case. We'll continue to track this story for you. Look for more coming up in our later newscasts. Well, 953 back here in San Antonio. If you're still trying to catch up on this year's Academy Award nominees, you are in luck. Steven Spielberg's latest movie, which is up for seven Oscars, is just out on Blu-ray and DVD. CNN's David Daniel has a look at the Fablemans. What kind of movie are we gonna make? Newcomer Gabriel LaBelle is a young filmmaker with a complicated family life in Steven Spielberg's The Fablemans. In this family, it's the scientists versus the artists. Sammy's on my team, takes after me. Michelle Williams and Paul Dano play his parents, and Seth Rogen, a family friend. It's like, you know those like magical domestic scenes that are in Steven Spielberg movies that feel so real, and like they're capturing like the essence of this like nostalgic part of your life. It's that for the entire movie, basically. What she got in her heart is what you got. You can't just love something, you also have to take care of it. It's more important than your hobby. Can you stop calling him a hobby? We had Steven uh, completely open, raw, naked, and vulnerable about his entire life with us. We had each other. And they had LaBelle centering the film as the young Spielberg stand-in. What a way to start, right? To be 20 years old, maybe 19 when we made yeah, this. Yeah. 19 years old when we made this, and you walk onto a, set, a Steven Spielberg set playing him. It was quite an experience for the young actor and potential future filmmaker. He's an incredible example, and it, it, it was just very validating, like, oh, yeah, totally. But I've definitely wanted to do it for a while, but it only makes me want to do it more. You stop making movies, it'll break your mother's heart. I don't know what to do anymore. You do what your heart says you have to. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And you can catch the Oscars right here on KSET 12 on March 12th at 7 p.m. The San Antonio Spurs finishing off their first leg of the rodeo road trip tonight over in Charlotte against the Hornets. Tip off set for 6 o'clock our time. We'll have highlights on the night beat. And we're hoping the Spurs can finally snap this losing streak that they are on. And here at KSET, we recognize educators who go above and beyond. And tomorrow on GMSA at 9, we're going to introduce you to a Douglas Elementary science teacher who is not only going above and beyond inside the classroom, but outside as well. All right, 64 right now. The, the fog is lifting. We'll see the clouds clear out some this afternoon. Temperatures will be warm, but that cold front comes through tonight. Small chance of a shower. Otherwise, the big story will be the gusty winds coming up tomorrow morning. Lots going on in that forecast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the front uh, right around midnight. And so tomorrow morning you will really feel the difference. And it'll be blustery. Okay. I think that's the word to Another go Another grab a jacket kind of morning. It Heavier is. Heavier jacket. Heavier jacket. I'll have it out and that's ready. Right. Thanks, yeah. Justin. Justin. Thanks. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day.